I've been streaming VR games for a couple of months now, peaking at over 150 concurrent viewers at one time. And while I might not be the best streamer, I do have a lot of people asking me about how I stream and especially how I stream VR games specifically. So in this three part series, I'm going to go over everything that you need to know to record or stream to Twitch, YouTube, Facebook gaming, or whatever platform you use. I'll be going over everything from how to see the chat in VR, to getting the best overlays and settings to run your stream smoothly. Starting off in this video, we're going to go over how to set up OBS with your video and audio. I'll also show you how I do my silhouette webcam trick, and I'll show you a trick at the end that'll make editing your recording so much easier if you plan on recording as well. Just to be clear, I'll be showing you how to stream any PC VR headset, including the Oculus Quest if you're using Oculus Link or Virtual Desktop. If you want to stream or record Quest native games, I have already made a separate video that shows you how to do that, including how to get your voice on the stream. So if that's what you want to do, go check out that video right here. With that out of the way, the first step to streaming is to download OBS Studio, which is the software you'll use to capture your video, audio, overlays, etc., and put it all together. Some people like using Streamlabs OBS, but they both work pretty much the same way and it doesn't really matter. If you're new to OBS, I recommend watching some videos to figure out the basics, but essentially it works like this. Here you have a variety of scenes, and within those scenes, you have a variety of sources. These video and audio sources are mixed together using the audio mixer and the canvas to make up your scene. Switching between scenes changes everything on the screen. As you can see here, I have one scene for my stream starting screen and another scene for when I'm actually streaming my game. To get your stream started, let's go here and create a new scene. And then under sources, we're going to add a game capture source. Now there's actually two ways that you can get your VR image onto the screen and there are pros and cons to both. One, and this is usually what I do, you can just capture capture the preview window that pops up every time you start a VR game. Two, you can open up what's called VR view or VR mirror depending on the platform, which shows a mirror image of everything that you're seeing in that headset. It literally just takes the lens that you're seeing, the image in the lens, and puts it on screen. The main difference between these two is that capturing the preview window makes sure the audience doesn't see your guardian or your chat window if you have it in game or any other headset menus or anything like that. The problem with this is that you don't have control over what eye is being displayed and sometimes the game preview windows just aren't good. I prefer the simplicity of just capturing the preview window, especially when it's a game where the preview window looks fine, which is most of the games that I play. But if you're playing a first person shooter game and want to change which eye is being captured, then you should probably use the VR view. Here is how you can open it up for both Steam and Oculus games. To open up Steam VR's VR view, just select the menu at the top left corner of the Steam VR window and then select display VR view. From here, you you can right click anywhere on the screen to change which eye is displayed. Generally, I won't change which eye is displayed, but if you're playing a shooter game, some people like to see through whatever eye you use to aim, which is a massive benefit of using this window over the preview window. Oculus, on the other hand, is a little bit more complicated. To find the Oculus Mirror application, you have to go into your files where the Oculus app is installed. For me, that was in Drive C, Program Files, Oculus, Support, than Oculus Diagnostics. In that folder was a program called Oculus Mirror.exe, and you can create a shortcut to this on your desktop to make it easier to find. Opening this up, you should be able to see a view of whatever you're seeing within the headset. I couldn't get this to work with my Oculus Quest 2 playing Rift games via virtual desktop, but if you're using a Rift headset or maybe through Oculus Link, then this is what you'll need to do to get that game preview window open. Once you have your window open, either the mirror or preview window, you're gonna select your game capture source and then change it to capture specific window, then change the window to whatever window is displaying your game. Now that you have this source, you need to center it on the canvas if it's not already. It usually will come already centered, but just in case, the easiest way to center it is to right click the source, go to transform, and then select fit to screen. This works if the window you're capturing is a full screen window, but if it's a window with a bar on top, you'll need to crop it to fit the canvas without displaying the top bar. Just drag the corners out of it until it's just the right size, and then you can right click on the source, select transform, and then center to screen instead of fit to screen. I usually keep two sources on my gameplay scene, one that's already cropped for window games and one that's for full screen games. That way I'm always ready to go no matter what game I'm doing. 
you can hide the one you're not using by hitting the little I button right here. So now that we've got your base game image, you can add other sources and position them however you'd like on the screen. Before we start adding a bunch of different sources and overlays, keep in mind that the canvas works in layers, so whatever is on top of the list will also be on top of the canvas. So I usually put my game on the very bottom with everything else on top of that. So let's add some sources and try this out. Maybe you want to add some text in the corner that has a kill count. To do that, just add a text source, edit it to say whatever you want, you can change the font, color, whatever else, then position it in the corner or wherever you want and adjust the size. I like to add a little bit of opacity to all my overlays so that they're not completely blocking out the game. You can do this by selecting the overlay, right clicking it, and then selecting filters. Then in this window, hit the little plus sign and add a color correction filter and then bring down the opacity to 50 or 75. Another important element of your stream is you. Most streamers can't get away without showing themselves. Viewers like to see what you're doing, your reactions, etc. To do this, you need a webcam, and then an OBS, just add a video capture device, and then position it wherever you'd like at whatever size. I personally don't show my face on screen for a variety of reasons, mostly because you guys couldn't handle my beauty. So instead, I create a silhouette of myself so that you can see me moving around on screen at the very least while still hiding my face. To do this you need a webcam and then either a green screen or I use a program called NVIDIA Broadcast. NVIDIA Broadcast is a software that works with NVIDIA graphics cards that has a ton of useful tools including a background remover. However you do it, you just need to get your image onto OBS with the background removed. Once it's there, just right click on the video capture source, hit filters, then add a color correction filter, and change the color to white or whatever color you want, and then I also turn up the brightness all the way and add a little bit of opacity. If you're using a green screen, I think you need to add a chroma key first to remove the green screen, but then after that you just add the same color correction filter with all the same settings that I just talked about to get the same silhouette effect. Alright, so now if you have alerts and overlays, you can add those now too. I won't get into that too much because there's plenty of videos on how to do alerts and overlays, but I highly recommend using stream elements for their simplicity. You can create alerts and overlays on their website, and then in OBS you just add a browser source with the URL that they provide you with. They're completely free, have a ton of overlays that you can use, and you can customize them with your own graphics, videos, and sound effects. The best part is that the overlays are being run online, which lightens the load on your PC, helping your stream to be smoother overall. I'll link to them down below if you guys want to go check them out. It's not a sponsorship, I'm not sponsored by them, but I've just been using them because they're really nice. Alright, so you got your canvas set up with your video game image and you, and now you just need to make sure that your audio is also set up properly. For a simple stream, you will have two audio sources, your game audio and your mic. Both a desktop audio track and a mic audio track should already be in your mixer, you just need to make sure that they're getting the right signals. To do this, hit the gear next to each track and select properties and then change the device to whatever device your audio is coming from. In my case, I set the desktop audio track to virtual desktop audio since I'm playing with my Quest 2 via virtual desktop, and then I set my mic to either my wireless mic or you can just use your headset mic what should show up in the list. If you do plan on streaming a lot, I highly recommend getting a good mic to replace your headset mic, which is almost always really bad. The only good wireless mic on the market right now for VR headsets is the Mod Mic, which attaches to your headset really easily with a magnet and is completely wireless and sounds amazing. I'll link to it down in the description below in case you want to check it out. But if you don't have a Mod Mic or don't want to get a Mod Mic because it's a bit expensive, like I said, your headset mic will work. Once you have this set up, you should add some effects to your mic to make it sound even better. The three that are essential, in my opinion, are EQ, compression, and maybe a noise gate. EQ is used to balance out your voice and just make it sound more natural by changing how bassy or tinny it sounds. If your mic makes you sound really tinny, for example, because you have a cheap mic, adding some low frequencies can balance that out and make it sound way better. Compression, on the other hand, makes your voice sound more consistent when it comes to how loud it is. Essentially, it makes you quieter when you talk really loud and makes you louder when you talk really quiet. So overall, it just balances out the volume so that your audience always hears you at a good volume. A noise gate or noise suppressor can be used to get rid of background noises that you don't want your audience to hear, such as your dog barking in the other room. I don't use this effect much because the mod mic that I mentioned before has really good noise suppression already built into it, but otherwise these are definitely filters that you would want to add. I'm not going to go super in depth on how to add these effects. OBS has a compressor, a noise gate, and suppressor all built in, but you need a third 
third-party plugin for EQ. Also, it takes a little bit of knowledge and trial and error to know how to use these effects effectively. So instead of prolonging this video, I'm going to link to a really good video that I used when I set these up that does a really good job at explaining how to do them and how they work. Although you can get away without these types of effects if you're just starting, getting your voice sounding really good is a super important and often overlooked part of streaming. So definitely look into getting a good mic and messing with these effects a little bit. All right, so now you need to mix your audio levels. This is just making sure that you're loud enough to be heard over the game audio, but not so loud that your voice gets distorted. To do this, talk into your mic with your normal speaking voice and then turn down the mic track volume until you're just barely hitting the yellow. You don't want to hit the red because that'll make your voice clip and sound distorted. Just barely touching the yellow is right where you want to be. Once your mic volume is set right, set your game audio to just lower the that. Mixing the two might take a few tries to get right and will be slightly different for each game, but setting the game audio just slightly below your mic is a really good starting point. It took me a couple of streams before I got it just right. Just, you know, ask your audience if everything sounds good and trust me, they'll tell you if you or the game is too loud. Before we move on from audio, there's just one setting you'll want to change if you plan on recording your gameplay and not just streaming. If you're recording, you'll want your two audio sources, your gameplay audio and your mic audio, to be recorded to two separate audio tracks so so that in post-production you can mix each one separately. By default, both audio tracks get sent to one audio track, which is a lot harder for an editor to work with. To change this, go into your OBS settings, the output tab, then select recording, go to the top and change the output mode to advanced. Here is where you can select which format you want to export videos in and which encoder to use. We'll talk more about that in another video. For now, we just want to change which audio track gets exported. Select audio track one and two and leave the others unchecked. Then switch over to this streaming tab and make sure the audio output mode is set to advanced and then select track 6 as the streaming track. Then hit apply, go back to the audio mixer, select any tracks gear and hit advanced audio properties. Here you can select which tracks your sources get sent to. For the desktop audio, select track 1 and 6, leaving the others unchecked. Then for mic track, select 2 and 6, leaving the others unchecked. Basically, we just set it so that when you record, you output two tracks, track 1 and 2, with 1 being your desktop audio and 2 being your mic audio. Then we made track 6 the streaming track, and we sent both your mic and game audio to track 6 together. This will make it so that when you record, your game audio and mic audio are automatically separated onto two separate tracks. And then when you go to stream, the mic Mic audio and game audio are automatically put together onto the sixth track so that you can hear the stream with both of them. All of this is done automatically without any effort from you, which is super nice if you frequently switch between both recording and streaming like I do. That's it for this video, guys. In the next video, I'll talk about how to see the chat in game, in VR, in your headset. And then in the final video of this series, I'll talk about how to get an absolutely smooth stream. So if you want to see those videos, make sure you're subscribed. Also, let me know down in the comments any questions you have. I'll be sure to answer them as much as I can. You can also join my Discord, which is the best way to troubleshoot issues and answer questions.